Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so happy to have you here. We are just gonna dive right into your reading. And um, gosh, yeah. I like to begin my readings by starting with a thank you um, to all of those who have been supporting my channel, who have subscribed, who like, who share, who comment. I deeply appreciate all the love and the support that you guys have brought to this channel. I am so, so grateful for it. It has been a beautiful journey because of you. Um, and to those of you who are new to my channel, welcome, welcome. I am so very happy to have you here. I hope that this message resonates with you and that you're able to find something useful in it. Um, just keep in mind that this is a general reading and take what resonates and leave the rest, all right? So let's begin with a little message. What is, what message do you have today for Pisces? What message is in Pisces highest and best good today? Pisces. What beautiful messages you're receiving here, Pisces. You know, I feel this energy, and I, I feel this all the time with your readings. There's just, and it, and it, today it's almost kind of reading as like a sacred space kind of within you, um, where it's like you kind of are able to always come back to, to find your balance, to recenter, to... Touch base with yourself to keep yourself in alignment, to keep your, yeah, your, you know, it's like your words, your feelings, your actions all in alignment. It's like you're really, I feel like you're well aligned right now, Pisces, or you're working on this alignment. You're getting closer to this alignment. Some of you may be in this stage where you're sort of connecting with yourself, really touching base with yourself, really balancing out. But some of you, it's like, it's just a place that you come back to, you know, maybe even every day. And maybe this is, you know, you kind of recap your day at the end of the day and just sort of regain this sense of like, yeah, okay, you know, I'm on the right track, you know, where I'm going, what I, what I did today is in alignment with where I'm trying to go or, or, you know, the vision that I'm holding for myself, I made progress or, you know, I held the line today or I didn't let someone get me off track or get me distracted. Um, and there is, it's, it's showing me that this is a space of, you know, real importance in your life and that when you spend the time to kind of reconnect with yourself, it's like what you put out is magic. You are able to, um, <clears throat> to really be at your top form. You know, it's like what you're putting out and what, yeah, it just, I, I just keep feeling like don't get distracted by things going on around you or by other people's hissy fits or I don't know even where hissy fit came from, but <laughs> um, it's like if you are the calm in your storm, you are the calm in your storm. You know, no one can shake you from that place. No one's going to get you off track. You are going to sit in that energy and you are going to be okay regardless. Um, you have this compassion energy and with this lotus over the heart chakra and the white light, the white healing light kind of sparking and coming from that, you know, a, a lot of Pisces, you know, they say that Pisces is the zodiac sign of the universal healer. You know, you, you guys can heal anyone. You can heal every zodiac sign. And that doesn't mean that you should, right? <laughs> no one can tell you what you should do. That's very unkind. It just means that you have that capacity. Not everyone deserves that, <laughs> that, that energy, right? There are people who are not aligned, who no matter how much of that energy you pour into them and onto them and, and, and show them, it will not bring them into alignment. It's a choice they have to make within first. And then when you offer them compassion, when you offer them, you know, this open heart, then it can be a profound experience for them. But just giving it to someone who isn't ready for it or isn't capable of really receiving it, 
um, can be a very draining experience. And so from this card, I'm actually getting the value of what you have to offer. It's very much giving me Queen of Cups energy where she's looking at that cup, that trophy, almost looking cup. And it's like remembering the value of what you have to offer and that it's important to have boundaries and to not offer it to everyone or offer it willy nilly, but like to remember that it is a sacred power. It is something sacred that you have that you possess. Um, when you are free to give it away and when you are free to like open up, there's this energy of, you know, good things come back to you. Uh, the universe returns that energy to you tenfold. It sort of feels like, um, and with a holy love, I, I honestly feel like you have a very strong soulmate coming in or someone who's already here. This is a future position, but this is the present position. So, you know, it does feel like, you know, open up to receive Pisces because there is like abundance. There is even here. I see the heart chakra really enlightened. Um, This feels like an experience, um, and this feels like, like, open up to it, open up to it, you know, open up to receiving. So, Pisces, stay aligned, stay grounded and centered, remember the value of what you have to offer, um, wait until someone earns what you, what you are capable of giving, and then let it go, release it, give it, and wait for the miracle. For Pisces, for Pisces, jeez, oh my god, you guys, look, you have this energy of maintaining balance and a resilient mind, and remember I said, it's like while people have their hissy fits, don't get distracted, don't allow that to suck you in, don't you know, even it says learn to forgive and let go of grudges. Yeah, when we hold on to grudges, we're sending, our thoughts are negative or our thoughts are, can even be um, unbecoming. <laughs> That's the word that, that, that came into my mind. Um, they can be, you know, like we can think, oh, I don't like that person or, you know, um, kind of directing kind of not even wishing bad things to happen to that person, but just it can bring out something within us that is not aligned with our true core. Um, Pisces, I really think that some of you are meeting the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with now or soon. Um, It's very interesting because I feel with this sadness, loneliness card, an energy of a mirrored soul. Like, this is something I feel you have experience with. <coughs> Bubby. <coughs> I know they're clearing out the debris. They're doing good work. They got to get all those branches out. Yes, they do, honey bunch. Um, this is the feeling of a mirrored soul. It, it's like... I feel Pisces as though you have been, you have experienced, there's a difference between loneliness and being alone. Um, and it may have been a path that began with a bit of sadness, a bit of loneliness, a bit of, you know, something that didn't work out that led to this feeling of isolation or this feeling of needing to kind of be by oneself, but not maybe necessarily by choice, but just by... I can't find someone who's a vibrational match for me or you know what I'm saying? Like that's what it feels like it actually stems from, but it may not have felt like that at the time. And I feel that the person that is either coming towards you or is in your life has to experience this. And it feels a, like a journey where it's like I'm starting out. I'm, I, I don't know why, but I'm getting the little red riding hood. 
and I don't really totally remember that story, but like, I'm just getting this like, I'm starting out and I am on this journey and I'm kind of optimistic or hopeful, like maybe I'm a little bit scared, but you know, I'm kind of, I haven't, I'm sort of naive is sort of the energy that I'm getting. And it's like, um, you know, then having something really disruptive or sort of scary or sort of something that like shakes your foundation or shakes your core sort of happen that leads to a space of like, I need to sort of be by myself and regroup or I need to, I, it's like, I need to come back into a sense of balance or something. And, and so it's almost as if possibly you were on this journey at the same time or you had it in different ways um, but you both had this experience, which actually really led you to much more of an authentic self is how it's feeling to me. So that when you're meeting each other, there is this feeling of authentic self meeting authentic self. <laughs> and almost this recognition, um, Take that as it resonates, you know, um, because it's like it goes from this energy of sadness and loneliness. Like, why am I always ending? It feels a little bit like the five of pentacles, like almost the exposure of a core wound or a deep fear. Um, and then it's sort of like the process of unwinding that or releasing that or letting that go or healing from it which then becomes this energy of like, I enthusiastically embrace me time. Like I enthusiastically embrace being by myself. I've, I've created this life through this journey that is authentic to me. Um, and that I am in sort of like deep gratitude for the time that I get to spend there. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, and, and there's this energy of um, almost this acknowledgement of, Instead of feeling like I need to be with someone else, whether it's to validate myself, whether it's to have companionship, whether it's to have connection, it's like I need to patiently wait for the vibrational match to show up in my life that joins me on this journey of authenticity and enjoyment and you know, joy and exploration and celebration. Um, and there's almost this energy with this ancient elemental magic of just trusting that this will come together. And it can even be where you're manifesting it, where you're visualizing it, where you're almost in essence, in a way, preparing yourself for this, aligning with it. And then you have soul whispers, eternal state. And you see how she has this veil? It, it, it's making me feel very like wedding-ish. Um, and here in this card, she's also wearing this veil. Um, it, it feels very much like letting go of a need to control and just trusting the universe and trusting the alchemy of this journey that you've been on and that it will be reflected back to you. The truth of this journey will be reflected back to you in the external world, like the trust of that. Where our focus flows, our energy goes, you know what I'm saying? So when our thoughts are Wow, I've really come a long way. Wow, life is a celebration. Life is a joy. Life is abundant. I, I am enjoying this time by myself or I am enjoying, you know, I feel abundant in this experience. What you do is you draw in that energy. You draw in that frequency. And that you can see is a very different energy. I mean, look, um, it's a very different energy than this one. This is very empowered. This is very much like my life is a joy. It's a celebration. It's about the journey. It's not that, you know, I, woe is me. I should be somewhere else right now or some, some other alternative ending should have happened rather than this one. You know, um, 
it's like everything is exactly as it is supposed to be and it's abundant and it's a celebration and I have this beautiful gift of this life to do whatever I want to do with it. It's there's a very different energy. So a lot of you may be on this journey, right? Um, but once you get to this place, then you're here also. Because once you get to this place and you're celebrating and your life is focused on like, what am I going to do today? You know, how am I going to celebrate this opportunity, this miracle, this gift that I've given that's called life, you know, <laughs> this body in this moment in this time. Um, that's when the universe starts bringing more things in that make you feel this way or that feel like this or that look like this or enhance that experience, right? Okay, so. I feel like something is coming together here. Okay. This is incredible. So when I when I was looking at this card, you know, I um, kept getting this feeling of this person, you know, sometimes the lonely life comes from something that we don't expect. Oh my gosh, my candle went out, huh? Let me just relight that because I'm, you know, <laughs> I got my balance, you know? Um, I got my way. Um, I got, I had this feeling with that card of, um, a lot of times what leave, leaves us in this sense of loneliness or leaves us in this energy of loneliness is that we, the people that we thought were friends or the people that we thought were supposed to love us really actually were not capable of it. And when, when someone Um, when people aren't open to love and open to those higher vibrational energies, it's typically because they're stuck in lower vibrational energies. And frequently what that is, is they're, they're envious. People can feel like they're in competition with you. And if you get too good or you get too powerful or you start to understand your own limitlessness, you know, people can really cut you off or really... Um, really uh, try to tear you down, try to diminish your worth in your own eyes and in the eyes of others, right? Um, and so you have this energy of shifting your focus and being confident, which is the exact journey that I see here. Instead of focusing on the lack and what I've lost and what where I should be that I'm not and whatever, it's this accepting energy of I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. Everything is working out exactly as it should. And I actually really wouldn't want rather be anywhere else. Like I am so happy with this life that I've created and I am enjoying this moment right here, right now, without any expectation of what it could have been or should have been or where I should be or could be. It's this moment right here that I am really, really embracing wholeheartedly. And when you shift, when you take your focus from a place of lack to a place of abundance, it, things, the, an abundant life comes in. The, an abundant external experience happens for you. This is something that, time, like, there are just so many examples of this in the world. And, like, if you, yeah, I'm going to leave that there. So it's like, be confident. And this is a one. And this is just making me feel like you can believe in yourself. You can believe in your ability to overcome and to transmute um, energy from this, you know, core wounding or fear or this feeling of like, maybe I'll always be alone. Maybe, you know, it's me. Maybe, you know, these people are right about me you know, what they say, maybe this diminished worth is something that, you know, why couldn't I just be worthy? Why couldn't I, you know, we can get really lost in that and trapped in that. Um, but when we, this show more respect, it's like, I cannot impress upon like just everyone in the entire universe. I, I feel like if everyone had this core understanding, we wouldn't have so many of the problems that we have in this world. 
And that is that we are the divine in ecstatic motion. You know, it, if I feel like Muji has the most amazing way of taking you to the place where you see it for yourself and experience for yourself and understand it yourself. When you tear away everything that society says, like you have to have this car, you have to have this house, you have to have this standing in your community, you have to be respected like this, you have to have this education, you have to, you know, like all these things that prove your worth, right? And your value. Um, and that's how we prove our, our worth and our value in society, right? Well, when you strip away all those labels, all those expectations, all of those human constructs of ego that were born out of ego and born out of the human being experience and condition rather than the spiritual condition and experience, and you tap into what is there once you let go of all of those ideas and all of those things, it, there is a you that exists there that can't be seen or touched that is the observer that is the awareness and what is that and what is that tied to and what does that belong to and so this card like show more respect it, it's like to yourself and to the divine that you are you are the divine in ecstatic motion you are like at the, you are none of the things. You are not your car. You are not your job. You are not your house. You are not your friendships. You are not your love experiences. You are not the daughter. You are not the son. You are not the brother. You are not the sister. I can tell you all the things that you are not. Those are labels. Those are human words. Those are born of the imperfection that is humanity. Once you strip yourself of all of those things and you stop thinking of yourself in terms of that and you connect into that deeper sense of self, that truer sense of self, that you that you always are and always will be eternally and you embrace that and you embrace that this is a miracle that you've been given this life, this experience as a spiritual being in a human body which is just miraculous over and over and over again and is proof enough if you really think about it the fact that you are breathing without thinking about it the fact that that breath which cannot be seen is what tethers your spiritual being to your human self that is undeniable the fact that we have trees and plants on this planet that are turning our exhales into fresh brand new healthy inhales the fact that, you know what I'm saying? Like when you just think about the miracle that is life, you understand the divinity that exists just in you, in your experience and that you are divine. And once you wake up to that, once you realize that, then you are not afraid that anyone is better than you or anyone is worse than you or anyone is this or that. You, you understand that we are all equal and that we are all the same and that we are all the divine and ecstatic motion and that we all have a purpose here, even the bad you know, quote unquote, I hate those words, bad and good, but like, you know, even the people who challenge us, they are our teachers. They teach us what we are really capable of overcoming, what, how resilient we are. They, they teach us a lot about how to connect to that part of us that cannot be disturbed, that cannot be touched, that cannot be changed by the hand of, of wickedness or enviousness or jealousy or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so it's almost like, you know, just paying reverence to the fact that you are a miracle and that you are divine and paying reverence to the divine by loving yourself, by, you know, and by being grateful for the gift of the miracle of life that you are experiencing and living it to its freaking fullest. You know what I mean? Um, loving deeply, you know? Um, and so you have this deep feelings card and you have this soul tribe card. And with the three, this is a two and a three. And twos, you know, are decisions. They're also couplings. And threes are, you know, the, the triads. They are, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are, you know, masculine and feminine and the divine. And it is that trust that the divine is playing a role in your life and that, you are always connected to the divine. You know, um, what I'm getting here, this is, I'm sorry, this is turning into such a, well, I'm not sorry, because I'm open to whatever messages that I receive, and this is the message I'm receiving, but 
it is very much like trusting that the divine is leading you in the place that you are meant to go and that nothing is a coincidence and nothing happens by accident. All the people that have come into your path, all the things that feel like you have to carry the weight of it because you made that decision. Listen, like let that go. Let those burdens go. Let all that go. All of that came into your life to get you to the place that you are right now. And that's all that matters is where you are right now. None of how you got here really actually matters. All of that has served its purpose already. We can let it go. We don't need to tell ourselves that story again. We don't need to revisit it again. It was all critical in how to get to this place where you are right now. And right now you are coming into people who are very meaningful, people who are vibrational matches for you. You know, you're coming into a space where you are much more harmonious with the spiritual beings having a human experience around you. You are seeing things. It's like, it's almost like ninja-like, you know, you're seeing the people who are toxic and you're not allowing yourself to get sucked in or distracted by it. And you're seeing the people who are vibrating very high and who are loving and authentic and you're recognizing their authentic self from your authentic self. And this is how it's like you're coming into a coupling with someone who you're going to have deep emotional, intimate feelings for potentially forever, you know, for the rest of this experience and and friends you know a group of people that are going to be very meaningful for you in your evolutionary process um it i i just keep getting this message you've had the time by yourself pisces and you maximized it you used it for what it was what it was for what it was worth and now here it is you expect miracles um open up to receive the bounty of the path you're on all right. I'm very like, that made me very warm. Like I can't, I don't like, um, physically temperature wise, I'm so much hotter than I was there a minute ago. Okay. Wow. You have the seven of wands and you have the three of wands. And when you add that up, that is the 10 of wands. That is the completion of a cycle. And this is really, really powerful. You also have two sevens, the chariot and the seven of wands. Um, and this is, you know, of course, that spiritual experience, that spiritual lesson, that spiritual, that, that waking up to what is unseen that is playing a role in what is happening here and the acceptance of it. And with the seven of wands, and this is like almost, I feel like discovering your own power or preparing yourself for an experience that is going to challenge you, but one that you are fully capable of. And I feel the challenge is to maintain the sense of authenticity that you have gotten here, you with you. Um, but this is something that is on your path for a purpose. And when you just stay true to yourself, these things can't touch you. See how much lower these wands are than this, than this, this warrior that represents you in this case. Um, and you see how you are there. This, this person has this dragon, um, to help it or to support it in some way, to be the wings that it doesn't have to be the, you know, intimidating, scary kind of thing that it, it doesn't have, you know, um, it, this feels like spirit, <laughs> you know, this feels like you have this new connection to a deeper understanding that is helping you maintain the sense of authenticity and stay true to yourself no matter what is coming at you in life or what is like externally happening it's like you can just completely stay above it and not be distracted and not be drugged down by it you're vibrationally not a match for it anymore and as long as you keep your vibration high like that you won't be a match for it and then you have this three of wands energy, which is kind of awesome. You know, um, this is like, well, how it's showing up here is sort of like, keep your eye on where you want to go. Focus on the light. You know, the journey is long and winding and we can't say for sure what's coming or what's on our path. Right. But when we keep our eyes focused on the light, the light will always grow. The light will always take over. Um, and that's all the plan and all the strategy you need is to stay true to the road that belongs to you, 
to not get distracted, to not get pulled off it or led astray by, you know, distractions or envious people who don't want you to, to reach your limitlessness. This is just about you with you and maintaining a sense of your own truth. Um, and with the chariot here, <laughs> this is the two and the three. This is where you find people or a specific person who is capable of yoking up with you, someone who can make this journey with you and can reach that level of success, that level of abundance, that level of no matter what comes at us, as long as we stick together, as long as we have each other's back and as long as we stay on the same page, we'll always overcome it. You know, I mean, and that that's your true life partner. That's that's someone who, you know, no matter what life throws at you, it can't really bring you down. It can it can trip you up. It can cause you to sort of pause. It can cause you to sort of be like, uh, you know, it can kind of um, kind of slap you across the face or, you know, whatever. But but as long as you stay <laughs> together and pointed toward that vision that you have for yourself, that plan that you have for yourself, you will always be able to make it through whatever obstacle is put in your path. The chariot is always successful. Jeez Louise. You know, this energy, the Knight of Cups on that Three of Wands. Wow, and the Page of Cups, this is so similar to yesterday. Um, the the Knight of Cups on that three of, uh, three of Wands energy is, you know, when you are focused on your light and you are focused on the light, you can trust that you don't have to force anything. You don't have to control anything. You don't have to manipulate anything. You don't have to you know, make your road straight. You don't have to insist on having it your way. You can trust the way and you can trust what comes to you on that path um, because it is a reflection of you, you know, and what, what you're focusing on. And so when you're focused on the light, then you attract more light, right? With the seven of wands being clarified by the page of cups, this is exactly what I was saying. As long as you stay true to yourself and you stay authentic to yourself, nothing can touch you because your vibration is too high. Um, you have the three of cups on the bottom of the deck with the chariot. And for me, this is sort of giving me this energy of re reconciling with a soulmate. This can be from this life or this could be from a different past life, you know, um, but it is, it is totally giving me this celebration of souls coming together, that two and that three energy. Actually, I'm, I'm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what was blocking you from it? This is like that realization when you realize that the blockage, what the obstacle that keeps you from this feeling of strength, this feeling of abundance, this feeling of I have more than enough, this feeling of I I am secure is our own thoughts, our own way of thinking. And the the way to prevent this limitation of of our mental body sort of controlling us and controlling like what we open up to or what we feel we are capable of tapping into or capable of experiencing or doing that keep us from that sense of security that allows us to open up to our own limitless nature. Once you feel secure, you can open up to it. You know, once you realize like, oh, wait, whoa, you know, <laughs> then you can really open up to it. Um, it it's our own thought. And so how do we fight that? Um, the four of swords, it's, it's, we, 
give ourselves the freedom and the space to not think, to not limit ourselves, to let go. You know, when we're asleep, we're not, we don't wake up in the morning going, oh my gosh, all night I was thinking about how like th this is going to affect us, that is going to affect me, this person might be thinking this, this person did this 10 years ago and I haven't really recovered and it's my parents' fault that I don't know how to experience love and, and da, 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 you know, that's when we don't sleep, right? That, those are the thoughts that keep us awake at night. But as long as we can give ourselves enough space to fall asleep or give ourselves enough space to recover, you know, to let go of all those thoughts and all those ideas and all those, that busy monkey mind jibber jabber that's happening in our mind that really is not serving our purpose. And when we can give ourselves this space to just tap into the awareness. Just remember what a life, a miracle life is. And just, even if you just sit in, on a park bench and look at a tree and think about how that tree is interacting with you and how that tree is actually, you know, giving you the oxygen that you're breathing, that opportunity to freaking stay connected as a spirit to your soul, your body your human body you know what i mean that tree is doing a huge service and it doesn't look like it's working at all and you know that's what life is when you come to this place with the four of swords and the king of pentacles of my mind does not control me my mind you know serves me you see how she's holding that sword in her hands like the mind is a useful tool when you know how to use it but when it is using you when it is controlling you when it is in charge of you when it is running amok all by itself without any guidance your mind is a puppy you have to train it um when you train it and you're able to like use it as a tool right um then you hold the power of your mind rather than your mind holding the power of you um and when you are able to feel the sense of security within yourself of no matter what life what challenges what obstacles life puts in your path you are secure you are abundant you can handle it you do not need to fear this you do not you let this take care of itself you let it battle itself you just stay authentic and true to yourself and you sit in this position of security and stability and abundance it just it happens effortlessly like the tree the tree is fulfilling its life purpose by like transmuting this carbon dioxide into oxygen and providing this gorgeous reminder to us of the beauty of life and the strength of life and the strength that we can always tap into. You know, in yoga, when we go into mountain pose or when we, when we sit even to meditate, you know, we talk about roots reaching down from our body into mother nature into the ground and it's such a powerful visual i feel it every single time you know and it gives me strength and it makes me feel grounded and centered and whole you know and you could try it you know if you even if you don't do yoga just stand or sit indian style on the ground or i'm sorry if that's offensive to someone lotus position um on the ground um and just imagine those roots coming down from your from your being into the earth and feel that beautiful secure feeling of being deeply rooted into and connected to you know mother earth um i know sometimes i can sound like a bunch of mambo jumbo but just try it just experience it um but yeah, it's like if you let life take care of itself and you don't let life pull you out of your position of strength, you'll always be in the position of strength. And these things will take care of themselves. Man, what a deep reading. You know, we, my husband and I were out this morning and there are long lines at the few gas stations that have gas here. Um, and you know, it's not bringing out necessarily the best. It's like people are trying to stay patient and people are trying to, you know, um, sort of go around, like there are streets blocked because, you know, when you come out, the, the, the lines are snaking around out into like the major streets. And so it's kind of chaotic out there. And, and then there are people who are turning the corner into the lane and are trying to be polite and let, 
traffic flow, but then people cut in front of them in the line, you know? And so it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's bringing out this sort of challenging energy, but it's like, if, if you can just, you know, do your best to navigate the line and give as much grace to the people, like my husband said, you know, I, I, I luckily very fortunate, my husband is like, always has us very prepared like we had full tanks of gas in our car before the storm hit and everything um but um he and we even have gas in a gas can but we we're giving that to our friend whose mom is in Clearwater who's not in good condition um but anyway so he has to go out there and it's hard to get gas um so anyway the thing is that you know if you can stay in a space of trying to be understanding and trying to stay calm and knowing that you are so close to the gas station that, man, even if your car dies, hopefully there is a gas can somewhere, you know, hopefully you can still be able to fill your car up. Like if you just try to have faith and try to have trust and try to be patient and try to tell yourself how everything is going to work out instead of telling yourself, you know, the worst case scenario of what could happen if, you know, the worst happened, you know what I'm saying? Um, then it, it's helpful, not just to you, but that energy is, has a ripple effect, right? Cause like, if you stay high vibe, then that energy, it's energy and our energy reaches out and extends beyond our body. It affects the people around us. Anyway, guys, I'm not trying to go down this path. It just keeps coming up. Um, anyway. Okay. So you have the six of cups here and you have judgment here. Oh, man, oh man. This kind of is that energy. And with the Six of Cups, it's like, you know, when, when you're kids, you sort of don't know all the hardships of life or all the obstacles that you may face. And, and life is sort of a playground. It's sort of this, this place that is full of wonder. And it's like, you know, um, like how little kids will always pick you flowers, you know, <laughs> and be like, oh, look, I picked this flower for you. And it's like a weed, but it's magical to that kid. And they're giving it to you. And how, what, how beautiful the, the thing that they're like giving this to you. Um, but you can still be swept up in the magic, even of weeds, even of, um, of just the smallest, slightest thing. Um, and that, that is like this energy with the King of Pentacles and the Six of Cups and the Five of Wands. It's like, if see how their hearts are glowing here. It's like, if you stay in this place of like, life is magical, life is wonderful, life is a divinely given opportunity in and of itself, it's a miracle. And we're surrounded by miracles. And when we observe life in that way, it really transforms the way we're seeing it. If we observe life in a way of, it's just obstacle after obstacle, challenge after challenge, it sucks all the time, it's hard all the time, then, then this is our experience. Right? And so we want to tap into this experience. And you guys were getting that playful energy, remember, a lot in your oracle cards. This feels like that. You know, remember, remember to look at life this way. Just remember to even focus your energy this way. And with the Four of Swords and Judgment, when you learn how to use your mental body as a tool, right? She's holding that sword. Um, you rise above you 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 rise above those things that could diminish or defeat you you always find a way to rise above them you always find a way to use those things as something positive a teaching tool to sharpen your mind to teach you something to make you more discerning to offer you something rather than to defeat you and you have the nine of pentacles here and the nine of pentacles is an energy that does not happen overnight it's an energy that is built day after day by choosing this path by choosing the path of abundance and by making healthy choices and by choosing out of love and and it's like when we do that life gets so good we just can't contain it we just don't know how and you have the wheel. Pisces, you're experiencing a major shift where everything is now happening for you. And it is a shift that begins with your mindset. It is a shift that begins with this energy of balancing out, connecting to your truth, to your authenticity.
you know I love to say on this channel, if you never quit, you can't lose. I think Winston Churchill said that. Um, you know, <laughs> you got that nine of wands. It's the wounded warrior. It's the, yeah, I've been through a lot. Yeah, I've taken some licks. Yeah, I've had this. See how she's sitting here with this lioness? I, I have had to tame the beast within myself. All, all of these experiences have helped me to be the one in charge. And the fact that I refuse to give up and the fact that I continue to carry this flame of desire, which may very well be for um, love to come to me or to have a partner or to have someone with genuine and authentic intentions to love and be loved, to come towards me, if I never get up, give up, it will eventually happen. And it does look, Pisces, like it is on its way to you. And that you you don't need to force it, you don't need to control it, you don't need to make it happen. It's happening all, all on its own. You have this Queen of Cups here, and that is remembering that true sacred value of what you have to offer and not letting other people's inability to um, accept it or to not be threatened by it. Uh, when you hold on to its inherent worth and value without letting that be affected by how it's been treated externally to you and realizing that how it's been treated externally to you has nothing to do with you or the worth or value of what you're giving. It has everything to do with what is exterior, external to you and the quality of that life for those people. You understand what I mean? I hope so. I think you do. You're Pisces. <laughs> um, you're at the end of a long journey of, of not getting up, giving up and having to fight for what you want. Now it's time to relax and let it come to you. Expect it. Yeah, there's just a ton of energy of opening up to receiving this. Wow, Ten of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, this, this, you kept investing, you kept investing and you kept looking for what was growing. You kept looking for where any sign of positivity or hope or of happiness or what you were trying to grow, you kept looking for where it was growing. You know, when a plant doesn't grow, we don't criticize the plant for not growing. We, we say, oh, that environment must not be right. You know, and we change the environment, right? And so it's like you looked for these signs of, you know, where are the doors opening? Where are the windows opening? Where is what I'm trying to grow in my life growing? You know, and you kept then honing your focus sharper and sharper on those things and allowing those things to grow. And as you do that, you know, we had that nine of pentacles. Now we have the 10 of pentacles. It grows, it expands. And the people who, who can help you on this journey or can do this journey with you show up show up and I got and are created. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So you have the two of pentacles here, but this two of pentacles, you can see it's very different than normal two of pentacles. Um, and it just, it feels like, you know, standing on that solid foundation, only opening up to choosing love, expecting those miracles that we saw in this, this Oracle card. Um, and just, you know, it is no longer a choice of love or fear. We're standing on stability. I don't know if you can tell, but these are all coins stacked up. We're standing on this layer of stability of this deeper understanding of the world. We are such a higher vibration that the stuff beneath, the stuff that isn't stable cannot touch us. Um, and it's almost like you see those wings. I just have to show you. What, what card was that? There it is. You see? Anything real cannot be seen or anything real cannot be destroyed. Um, this is real. This is like, it, it's your choice to, it's the choices that you've made stacking up, building up, making a difference, taking you to a place where your vibrational match is calling in the soul tribe, is calling in relationships that reflect that, that are capable of building into something long-term and long-lasting and legacy building and leaving. All right, Pisces. 
Let me get you some message cards. I'm gonna get my desk back to normal here. And I'll go back to the old cards, but for now, we're just using these little message cards. All right, Pisces, if you're dealing with a water sign, I know that you know I'm hiding deep feelings for you and now I feel stuck. <laughs> you are my star who outshines all others. All I ever wanted and needed is in you. If you're dealing with a fire sign, you're getting, I've never cared so deeply for someone before. I want to be there for you, there to take care of you. I can't bring myself to open up and let you in. You are always so sweet. And if you are dealing with an earth sign, where do we go from here? We So we meet again, my friend, my dear friend, through space and across time. The taste of your presence is something I will never be able to forget. And if you're dealing with an air sign, you're getting facing my reflection is more than I can handle. Can you handle all my scars? You leave me breathless and without words. All right, Pisces. Well, this is what I have for you. I'm, the word indomitable, I think is a word, just popped into my head. So I don't know what that is, but there it is. And um, gosh, guys, this is what I have for you. I really hope it helps. I hope it brings you some peace and clarity. Um, I feel like you're on the precipice of taking a giant leap of faith, of opening up to accept and receive a lot of abundance and a lot of really cool stuff coming in for the hard work you, you're doing. I think, you know, staying your authenticity is kind of the message here. Um, trust it. Believe in it. All right. This is what I have for you. I really hope it helps. Until next time, guys. All my best. Always, always. Bye-bye.